From the store, to the bank, to the home. OK, Google, um, what noise does a panda make? To the airport, biometrics, authentication, all around us. You are the password. We are talking your fingerprints, your eyes, your voice, those now being used to identify us in all manner of ways. It's incredibly common these days, especially on flagship devices. If you don't see a fingerprint reader on a phone, someone's going to get upset. And those fingerprint scanners have been around on phones for years. They're known to be secure. Even the FBI struggled to get into an iPhone belonging to the San Bernardino shooter. Samsung lets you pay for goods using your eyes as your pin. And Apple's new iPhone 10 recognizes your face using technology it says even a lifelike model could not fool. The chances of breaking through? One in a million. Which sounds great for convenience. Being able to use our fingerprints to easily wake up the screen and to get into the phone rather than having to input anything, it's just something that a lot of people just adopt. But raises the inevitable security concerns. Notably, that is a lot of pretty personal information. So who has access to it and what could they potentially do with it as well? It's not all in one place. It's distributed. Some of it's in your device. Some of it's kept in government databases. Some of it is partial. Um, and it has to be put together in order to make a decision. That's the view of this expert. Welcome to the new normal. Essentially, biometrics really now filters through everything. Because it's not quite that black and white. Computer uh, biometrics does a few extra things, and that is that it actually looks to make sure that you're alive, uh, that the biometric signature, your fingerprint, is really you. Um, and then also sometimes uses context, like, for example, where are you located in GPS? And so by putting that all together, they can get a good idea and high confidence that you are who you are. Meet Jacob, Mikhail and Sinjini. Only one of them's getting into this computer. Can you be here? It's not just scanning the face, it wants to see the ears too. They've been working on this here at CSU Fullerton for a while now. It's still a little rough around the edges. What's the kind of success rate? Uh, we're at 97 percent. But they're hoping their 3D scan invention will take off. And here's why. Both combined provides more security. If I'm an attacker, I want to get a picture of your face. That's pretty easy with Facebook. Uh, now I need to find a picture of your face and your trained ear. That's a little bit harder for me. That's another dimension I need to find. So the cameras are watching. The electronic ears are listening, whether we like it, whether we trust them or not.